Hi, Jamie with you again. Thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. I hope you're very well indeed. This video is all about part two of working with the Yamaha 1202 mixer. And of course, I've been recording some drums right here in the middle of my studio. So uh, stick around and have a listen. So if you've seen my most recent video, or previous to this one at least, you will know that I've picked up this old Yamaha 1202 mixing console, which um, you know is, is a live mixing console, lovely sound, lovely rich EQ, similar to Neve in its warmth, but no, it's not a Class A desk like this Chilton behind me, uh, but still a very nice device. Well, I wanted to do an AB, record a song, uh, so I'm recording a cover song uh, called Black Coffee, uh, look that one up and I'm going to compare recording through the Yamaha 1202 and the Chilton. So I've done some microphone splits so I can record guitars, drums, vocals and split them between the two mixers and then record back to my digital audio workstation which is Nuendo. If you haven't heard of Nuendo, well look that one up as well. Uh, long story, I've got another video on Nuendo. But also, I've done another video in the past on music phase in music production. And within that video, I talk about recording drums using the Glyn Johns technique. Now, up here, I'll do a, a few shots of what I've got set up here. I've got an overhead mic above me here, sort of pointing down at the snare drum. There's a right hand or um, right hand to me, the drummer, um, room mic here. Um, and then a kick drum microphone below me. So that is uh, creating the Glyn Johns uh, mic technique and it's really a fabulous, fabulous sound and I'll tell you why. So the reason why the Glyn Johns recording technique is so fabulous is all about phase and really I'm using one, two, three measures. So an equal measure from the snare drum, one, two, three drumsticks up to my mic. You may not see that in this shot, but anyway, I'll show that in a minute. Then we're going from the center of the snare drum, one, two, three measures across to this left hand or right hand side room mic. And it's kind of the equal distance over to the kick drum microphone, which you can't see me below. But basically, all of the sound of the drums or the center of the snare or the center image of the drum kit is basically hitting all three microphones at once, which gives you a lovely tight focus sound and as I've been recording the drums for Black Coffee I've been running these mics, the three mics, through the Yamaha and also through the Chilton recording to separate tracks on my digital audio workstation so I'll give you a listen to those and uh, uh, yeah see what you think that's really coming together in a nice way. I've also tracked a little parlor guitar, a little harmony acoustic guitar, some guide vocals at this point but I'll, I won't uh, let you hear those but I'll let you hear the guitar and the drums let me know what you think. One, two, three.
Also, thank you so much to all the people who have commented on my first video here talking about their experiences with Yamaha uh, consoles or little mixers. Incidentally, this is a 15 volt version. There are 24 volt versions that are similar to, uh, to Neves in that they have a greater power supply, boosting their ability to, uh, to really create um, a cleaner source or less noise. I'm finding this one at this point a bit noisy, yes, but you know, that's the way it goes. But you know, recording drums, I'm reducing gain rather than boosting gain. So it's not really a sensitive instrument, it's an opposite of the sensitive instrument. So I'm not really hearing that noise in the recording. So, so far, really great results. Thanks for joining me on Talking Sonics. Really good to see you here. If you haven't subscribed before, please do so. Click the bell below, you know what to do. And I will see you as I progress with the recording of Black Coffee through the Yamaha 1202. Take care.